Hello. We're going to talk about practicing your graded washes, flat washes, a little bit of color blends if you like, some color schemes, and just using this as a fun um, activity to help you practice these things, learn how to control water, and you know, play with warm and cool colors. So I'm picking a word and I've done a few of these just to practice it out. I suggest just a few, you know, three, four, five letters. If you wanna go more, great, but just picking a nice short word that you can break the letters down into basic shapes really helps. So I got hope here, I noticed the H is three different ones. You do have to kind of think about what you're gonna do with, with holes in the letter. If you make it real big, you can have two separate shapes or it can just be one shape to be the whole thing like I've done with the O and these two. But you want to make it so that you're, you have shapes that you can fill in to practice these techniques in watercolor, but also so that it's not too tiny. Give yourself some room to play, you know? So, um, and then we'll fill in the back with some shapes and then we're gonna do them so that the word is either warm colors and the background is cool or the word is cool the word is cool colors and the background is warm colors and the idea with that is that you get to practice kind of what it's like to mix analogous colors remember those are ones next to each other on the color wheel and see what happens as you mix them together and try to make each little square slightly different so you don't want your shapes to be i was saying maybe not too much less than um like uh, one by one inch square-ish. All right, and I'm totally stealing from my student Raul who did this really cool thing where he made, boom, his, his, um, his word. I thought it was fun. Let's see, but I don't want this. So for me, it helps to draw it out in pencil first. Boom! And then, let's see, that's pretty thin. I don't want it to be quite that thin. And I did those other ones with um, black because on the Google Meet camera, it's hard to see. I do want two separate parts here for the inside and the outside. Um, so I'm gonna have the outside and then an inside shape. You do wanna have a separate shape. So it's a little confusing. This is gonna be a shape I'm gonna paint and this is gonna be a shape I'm gonna paint. Um, that's why I'm doing two, so like I could make this one shape, but I want to have like an inside and then one in there too. Um, so this one maybe will go like here and have this. So you can make your letters any way you want. Some blockiness helps, you know. And then I'm gonna take these out. And by doing it in pencil, I can always erase. Wow, this is not a great eraser. It must have gotten wet. Um, you can always erase those parts. Now you can leave it as pencil. You can go over it with the big dark Sharpie like this to give it kind of an outline. But the goal is to have separate shapes so that as you're practicing your washes, they don't overlap and do, um, let's see, I wanna give it like an explosion. What? Um, they don't blend. The goal is we're trying not to make things blend. Well, that was a delayed reaction there. So let's see here. Maybe we'll do something like that. That's pretty tight. I want to be able to not have tiny spaces. I want to just play with... There we go. I guess if I'm doing boom, though... Maybe that's kind of lending itself to it. We'll see. So these I wanted to fill the square, yet make a little frame. This one I think I'm gonna let the, just because of the word. I'm gonna let the pointy things be my. Edges. Edges, apparently I'm having a hard time talking and doing today. <laughs> Edges. We'll just come in with that one later. Let's make that kind of big. Little guy. 
All right, so I've got everything drawn in. I can kind of see, so this is a shape, that's a shape. And I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the boom in cool colors and the background in warm colors this time. I'm not gonna go over this one with the dark lines. I'm just gonna let this show. And then sometimes once it's totally dry, don't do it before, but once it's totally dry, then you can um, come through with a bigger eraser and erase the parts. If it's light, if it's darker like this, and it's underneath your colors, you might, once you paint it over it, sometimes you can't get the pencil off. So I'm just gonna lighten some of these lines a little bit because I don't really wanna see them later. So there we go, that ought to do it. All right, so now I'm going to, oh, I hope that was in the picture. I'm gonna bring my paints over here and I've already been kind of mixing some warm and cool. My goal is to try and make every little square slightly different than the one before it, but everyone's gonna be some variety of wash. I did a little bit of color blending. I did some graded washes to try and, you know, just like let some things happen. But I also try to do some flat washes. So my goal with this is mixing colors, just seeing what's gonna happen and playing with wash so I can get those different colors. Um, all right, I'm gonna use my round brush here because I got a lot of little tiny spots. I'm gonna start with the letters. Let's see, I'll start over here. Let's go, let's go some kind of bold. I did already put a drop of water on each of my paints just to kinda, you know, and I could probably do it again because it's been a little bit since I painted. All right, I got a nice dark color, but remembering I'm practicing washes, so I'm going to wet my space that I'm gonna fill in first. And as I get to these edges, I want clean edges. So I'm not just practicing making that, there's a little bit of paint still on my brush. If I were really doing a pure wash the way I should, I would have cleaned this all the way, but I know this is gonna be purple, so it's gonna be okay. But notice I'm anchoring my hand on a dry part of my paper, and I'm going in one smooth stroke at that edge. And then I try not to go too close to the edge anymore because I want to set the edge and not mess with it. And the watercolor, because it's so wonderful, it's spreading out and moving around, it's gonna go to those edges for me. I don't have to worry about it. If I find I messed up an edge, I can go back and fix it. But when I'm making this flat wash, I'm just working to fill that space as evenly as I can. There we go. And this is a scrap piece of paper I used. We're using about a half a sheet of paper. Um, and actually it's from a different notebook, so it's not quite as nice as our usual watercolor paper. But still working pretty well. All right, so now I got my outside part. I'm actually gonna move this so that I can get in there a little more easily. And remember, I don't want it to be exactly the same. I still like that color, and I might try and keep it kind of close to that, but now what if I make it a darker blue? A little bit more bluish than a blue-violet. Let's see how that is. Okay, I wanna go even more blue. Oh, I didn't wet my paper, that's okay. So now I can clean my brush, make sure I always got a nice clean brush water. I'll wet my page. And you can experiment too, like what happens in these different parts when you um, when you don't wet the paper? How does the paint react? So this is all meant to be practice. So what happens, like with the normal wash where I wanted to spread on its own, I'd wet the paper. I like how it blends. Make sure my edge is the way I want. Now see how I'm getting pooling here? There's a little more water on this one than the last one. This is one of the reasons we're experimenting with this. So as I bring this around, I might decide, ooh, too much water. I can kind of lift it with my brush and dab it on my paper towel and get rid of it. I can come back to that edge and clean it up. Look at how that edge isn't nice. One clean line kind of with the side of my brush. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll even that out. And then maybe I want to leave it like a little lighter in this edge. I'm just playing. Take a little bit of that off. What happens if I do that? What happens if I leave, take a little bit of the pigment away, just to make it a little different? There we go. <coughs> There's that one. Now, if I'm doing some warmer colors, I keep going usually with my cool colors, but I want to show you some of both. 
So my background and these spiky guys as the boom are gonna be my warmer colors. I do need to add a touch more water to these just to get them. Now that yellow, it's a little messy, but guess what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that yellow next. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. If your yellow's messy, clean your brush. This might be too dark. I think it's fine, but if it's starting to actually affect the color, then I would clean it up. Look at that, because this was a little dry, all I had to do is go like that, get a little water on it, bam! I got all that color out of there. Fabulous, look at that. Now I can go in here. Oh, too much paint on the, on the brush. I want that to stay somewhat transparent. I was just trying out what happens if I don't wet it first on this paper. I wanna kinda of get an idea of what's gonna happen. And this is my warm colors because it's a background shape. So cool colors on the letters for me and warm colors on the background shape. It's gonna make it much easier later to help me figure out the letters and be able to really see those as I'm working. So I got this guy. Now what if I wanna do a little color blend? Okay, how about a color blend? I'm gonna take some orange over here and bring it into my yellow, and because it's fabulous watercolors, like we talked about, they're gonna do some fun stuff for me. So I can set that edge, maybe I clean up my brush a little now, and I let them add a little water so that they start to blend together. Let's set that edge. There, there we go, leave it alone. I'm gonna let it do some work, see what it does. Maybe I'll come over here and add some red orange because remember, I want to make everyone slightly different. And these are smaller spaces. So if I'm not wetting the paper as much to start, it's probably going to be okay. When you're working in bigger spaces to get a flat wash, if you don't wet the paper first, it's not going to spread evenly. There we go. I could leave it like that. I could say it's more of a flat wash. I could say, you know what? I want a little more color on one end and put that on there. Maybe I'll spread that around a little bit. And then I'll let that, I think I want to get some water. Cause I didn't wet this first. It's not going to want to blend as easily for me. So I'm going to bring water back top of it. If I wet it first, that would blend for me. All right, and I'm just going to keep working my way around in all these pieces, these different spaces, till I get something like that. Lots of colors. Separate your warm and cool. Think analogous. Think of how can you mix them. Practice your washes. Practice your edges. Practice how much water you need. If you've got too much, dab some on the paper towel. Just kind of get used to all these things. It's a fun way to practice. Make a cool sign. Maybe it's your name for your bedroom door. I don't know. I don't know. See what you think. Have fun.